Hi, everyone. Welcome to this webinar in an evening, or maybe it's the morning for you. It could be all hours of the day. Uh, so we're so excited for you to join us here today. Um, this webinar is hosted by Travify Academy, and we have an amazing guest, Tammy O'Hara, here today, who's going to share so much inspiration with us. I'm really excited. I know all of you who have signed up are just as eager and excited to hear everything as well. This has been a really popular webinar, we've noticed. So we're just really pumped to have this broadcasting today. So first, to quickly introduce myself, uh, my name is Stephanie Grice, and I'm the Senior Client Champion and Education uh, Coordinator here at Travify. And I will introduce our special guest here in a minute, um, but I do wanna give a quick plug really quick on Travify Academy and just kind of what to expect um, on today's webinar. So Travify partners with experts across the, the travel industry to provide these free educational webinars through Travify Academy. So these webinars are not commercial in nature to promote those uh, organizations, nor does Travify ever accept compensation or partnerships. Uh, so Travify Academy really just exists to provide these powerful educational experiences and fulfill our mission to power the success of travel professionals. So today's webinar is for informational purposes only, and we, um, you know, so we're really excited, you know, for you to learn uh, more about it. We have a website that just launched as well that you can check out past webinars. You'll be able to check out this webinar as well um, in there, as well as, you know, all kinds of other content that you might find really helpful. And I also do want to mention um, that throughout this webinar, uh, we are going to have a question at the end, question and answer time. So there is a chat box in there. There's a question box is I think what they call it. And uh, throw your questions in there throughout this presentation. And I'm going to be watching those. I'm going to, um, you know, pick those that we will try to get through as many as we can um, in this hour. So use that chat box there. Um, the other thing I do want to mention too is that this webinar is being recorded. Um, so after this, if you have to hop off, um, you know, you get a call or you need have something else comes up, that's okay. Um, at the end of this, we're going to send an email follow up with a link where you can watch this again. So if you want to pass it along to a friend, um, you can do that if you want as well. So now to the fun part why we're all here today, I want to introduce our guest Tammy O'Hara. Um, so Tammy is the owner of Million Miles Travel Agency that is based in Brooklyn, New York, and has owned this independent agency since 2017. Um, she's a, a New York State licensed attorney, and Tammy began in the travel industry, putting together travel itineraries for friends and family, uh, mostly to Europe and Central America for over five years before officially entering the travel industry in 2016. So after a few months with a host agency, Tammy began researching ways to work without a host agency until officially making it the leap in 2017 by joining CCRA's accredited travel agency program. So since 2017, Tammy and her agency has expanded to include three independent contractors and one virtual assistant. Uh, so Tammy has uh, been mentioned in publications such as CNN Money and was also featured in the Travel Market Report. So today, Tammy works full-time as, as an agency owner, but she also continues to practice law in a reduced capacity. So she has her plate full. So we're really excited that you could make time for us here today, Tammy, and join us here today. Thank you so much, Stephanie. And, and I'm excited uh, to speak with everyone about my journey um, from a hosted agency, uh, well, from being hosted to being an independent agency. Um, so um, again, Stephanie, Stephanie pretty much uh, gave a really great biography of my career um, as a travel agent and as an agency owner and uh, before that as an attorney. Um, so again, uh, Tammy O'Hara, I am an Esquire. I'm legally allowed to do that by New York State. I'm also the chief experience creator um, for Million Miles Travel, Travel Agency, LLC. Um, so a little bit about me. Um, that Yes, that is me. Um, that is me hanging off the side of the Grand Canyon, um, and I am crazy. Um, but um, I... Currently, I'm a licensed attorney. I'm currently doing administrative law, um, and I run my business full time from my home. Uh, and it's been a crazy journey, and I love every single minute of it. And I want to share with you kind of my tips, tricks, 
of how I managed to stay sane um, while working as an attorney and also managing my ICs and also my business. All right, um, so as I said before, um, or as Stephanie stated, um, I am headquartered in Brooklyn, New York. Um, I've been independent from since 2017. My business itself um, has been in existence from since 2016. And before that, I was just, you know, working for free um, for friends and family. And uh, today I am, oops, sorry. <laughs> I am, I have three ICs that work with me, um, one in New York City and two in Florida. And um, we consider ourselves a boutique agency in that uh, we're small, um, we don't take everything, um, and we really try to put as much of ourselves into each itinerary that we do. Um, and as I said, the, the journey from hosted to independent was bumpy, um, but ultimately satisfying. All right, so first, I guess what I should, what would I wanna talk about while my computer uh, sits there frozen is I want to talk about um, why or if you should become independent. So it's very sexy, I feel, for you to, for people to think about becoming independent. Um, that is the topic of a lot of Facebook groups um, and you know, there's always questions about, you know, should I be independent? Um, what should I do about becoming independent? And, you know, my, whenever anyone asks me, you know, about my personal experience of becoming independent, I always say, you know, make sure that you really think about it before you uh, go down the path of independence. I always, uh, when I have counseled people who have contacted me personally, I always ask them, you know, have you looked at your numbers in terms of what numbers, what are your numbers for the current host agency that you're working with? Do they, what are the commission levels that you're receiving from your host agency? What is the commission split? How much are you paying as a part of your business? And how much is the host agency paying for your business? You know, my mom has a, oops. let's go back now that it's back. <laughs> um, so it's basically you look before you leap. I said, it's really, it sounds really sexy, but there are a lot of things when you become the captain of your ship that you have to be responsible for that previously your host um, covered, such as uh, seller of travel compliance. Um, I'm sure that everyone here knows that there are particular states where you are required to have a seller of travel license in order to sell to residents of that state. Your host agency usually or sometimes will be covering your ENO insurance, the cost of your CRM system, and also the fact that when you are a part of a, a host agency, especially a large host, a host agency, you don't have to start at the bottom of commission levels. Um, as someone who is becoming independent, you get the benefit of the, you know, thousands of other hosts, um, thousands of other agencies that are working under that host agency. So you get the host agency has the volume so that they can command the higher commission levels. So if you decide to become independent, you either have to show those suppliers that you have the volume so that you can negotiate or you start at the bottom. Now, I started out six months after I, be, I was started with a host agency, I decided to go independent. So I was pretty used to being down at the bottom. So for me, it was nothing for me to start over and basically rebuild my business up. But if you've been with a host agency for years and you feel now is the time to make that leap, you definitely want to look at your numbers and make sure that you are in a strong position to negotiate with suppliers. Now, I don't have to tell everyone this because, you know, they always, you know, preach specializations, you know, you know, the riches are in specialization. 
So I guess one of the great things about becoming independent is that you get to be a little bit more choosy with your clients and your time. If you don't have a niche yet, now is a good time to get one. Um, you should have one regardless of if you're with a hosted agency or not, just because you can't be everything to everyone, um, but you can be what I call everything to someone. Uh, so my clients love me for what I can do for them. I don't take everything, um, but what I do take, I put my, you know, I put a 100% into it. They know I stand by every single itinerary that I put together because I know that I am responsible for that itinerary, regardless of what happens. You know, if it's 3 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, and if my clients have an issue in Europe, I need I'm, I am up at 3 a.m. taking care of that issue because I stand behind everything that I do with my agency. Planning fees. I know everyone has talked about it, how to do it, you know, how should how it should be done. And it's a fact that for a lot of host agencies, they don't really allow it. Um, I am a firm believer in planning fees. Um, I believe that and I, I believe that this is kind of a kind of a result of become, being a lawyer where as a lawyer, you are you are expected to have fees. Uh, and you're expected to be compensated for your time. I believe that travel, uh, travel agents, advisors, whichever way you wanna call yourself, you are also a professional and you should be paid um, to be as a professional. Um, so I believe in planning fees. I do charge one to all clients, regardless of if they're new or um, a current client. I just have a different way of implementing it based on what position they are. If they're a new client, I offer, um, I implement a straight fee, which basically means that it's 100% non-refundable. It does not go towards their, uh, their trip. Uh, it is my compensation for the planning that I do uh, with, for my, in my time. For my uh, existing clients, I do more of a plan to go fee and that I, Put, put it towards their trip if they book. If they don't book, then it comes to me. And I do allow my ICs to do the same. Um, and I do it through my merchant account so that they I'm able to keep track of what's going on. And there's, you know, I'm not running afoul of any laws, specifically any of the seller of travel laws. All right, so the number one enemy, I feel, of any small business owner, not just travel agents, is time and money. They're, those are no, like the co-occurring number one, number two enemies. Um, you don't have enough time and you don't have enough money. And again, I'm kind of a type A personality, so I'm always about building systems um, and building your business through systems so that you are able to spend your time doing the thing that you do best, which is sell travel. Um, my mom had a constant phrase that I heard all throughout my life about being the chief cook and bottle washer, basically or everything. And you have to learn to let go. And the way how you let go is to automate your business. And I'm sure that if you've heard any of the travel marketing gurus or anyone who's working, um, you know, in a high volume system, they tell you that there is a sales process and you, you commit to the sales process and it will help your life go easier. And they're not lying. It makes your life so much easier if you are able to automate your, your sales process in any way. So this is a three step process. It's hard. It's a hard three-step process because the number one the number one step is very hard to do because it does require some introspection. So the first thing that you need to do is you need to sit down and plot your sales process from lead the time that someone comes in to their returning from travel. I did that when um, in, back in 2016, back when I was planning. And I put together kind of my 
if I could have it the perfect, the perfect sales process, this is how it would look. And I plotted it, you know, I wanted an appointment system because, you know, I wanted to make sure that while I'm talking with my potential client, they're the only ones that I am dealing with at that time. So I don't have multiple, multiple phone calls, multiple people talking to me. I am focused on that one person. Yes, that does, you know, kind of reduce the amount that I can do in one in a in a day, but I feel that a part of you know the process and the part of what I sell to my clients is that when I am working on their trip, they are the number one priority. And you have to create a system that automates that sale pro sales process. So it's all well and good to have a sales process, but if you have to have your hands in it at all times, it doesn't really help because you're still spending way too much time in the sales process instead of just selling. Uh, so you have to find systems, you have to find apps, you, you know, sometimes you have to, you have to spend a little money in order for you to get the, the process that you want and that will work for you. And the third and I guess most important step is that you have to actually implement it. It's all great to write it down and you know make a plan, but if you don't implement it or if you don't implement it all the time, then it doesn't really help you. So I have, I when I was approached by Travify to put together this webinar, um, I, sat down and I went again through my sales process and I went and looked through the top seven tools that I use pretty much every day um, or that is being, that's being used by me every day uh, to automate my system. And, you know, it's not perfect, but it's pretty perfect for me. <laughs> All right, so these are my top seven tools um, for saving time and tears. I know for me, I I can I get really frustrated at times if you know things don't really go the way how I want them. So saving time and tears for me is an, is it's it's a a, a daily struggle. Um, but these are the uh, the tip the tools that I use. Some are free, some are not, um, and some are you know, freemium. So you can pick and choose or there are other options and I can give you some ideas of some other options that are available out there that, you know, are similar. These are the tools that I have used and I love experimentation. So before I used or have stuck to these tools, I probably have tested at least five other tools that are kind of the same and I use the one that works best for me. All right, so let's start with the first tool, which is Acuity. Um, if you're not familiar with Acuity, it is a, a scheduling program. It's an appointment uh, set, appointment setter. Um, and it basically will turn your business from people who just call your business into an appointment-based company. So I occasionally I'll get phone calls, but my business is very web-based, um, I guess I'm, I, I'm in part of the millennial crowd. Um, I guess my birthday, my birth year makes me fall under it. So I am big into the internet and using it, using the internet to the best of my ability. So Acuity um, allows you to turn, you know, to create appointments from a lot of different platforms. So I have an Acuity uh, scheduler on my Instagram account, my business Instagram account, my business Facebook um, page. So if anyone wants to, um, they want to schedule an appointment with me on those platforms, they will all go to my Acuity account, which also, also um, syncs up with my Google calendar. So I'm actually able to block off time that I know I'm not gonna be able to take calls. For example, if this was a this webinar webinar took place about an hour or two earlier, I would have blocked off all of that time to make sure that my phone didn't ring while I was on this webinar. 
Another great thing about Acuity is that it connects with your email marketing system, such as MailChimp and ConvertKit. I've used Acuity with both of those, um, and you can, what if somebody signs up through Acuity for an appointment, they can also, at the same time that they sign up, they can choose to now get your newsletter, your e-newsletter. So it's a great way to kind of capture those email addresses so even if they don't really, if you don't end up booking a, 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 a trip with that person who made the appointment, they now still get your e-newsletter uh, because they have signed up through their appointment. You can, as I stated earlier, you can control when potential leads can sign up. So, you know, if you're going to be away on a fam and you're worried about people contacting you to make appointments, you can block off that time that you will not be available. Next one, okay, I wouldn't, I couldn't be on a Travify webinar and not talk about Travify. So I've been using Travify now for, I say two or three years. Um, and I've used a few other ones, a few other itinerary builders. I was putting together my itinerary builder when I first, first started and it takes a, you know, if you've done complicated or even not so complicated itineraries, you need something that's will cut down time. Um, I, part of my specialization is pretty complicated, complex uh, group travel and, uh, you know, honeymoons and just European and South American vacations, which involve a lot of moving parts, a lot of hotels, lots of flights, rail, you know activities and if you have to put to do that manually it will take you forever travify and again there's other there's other itinerary builders um, that you can use but i have found just use one of them the an itinerary builder can cut your time in half um, now that i have been using it for years i can go in and put together a very complicated itinerary and 15, 20 minutes. It's it's kind of an old hat for me right now. I like also that it auto updates flights and it allows you to attach documents to the itinerary. My goal for 2019 is to go green. Uh, so what I do is that I attach all of the travel documents to the itinerary and then my clients can either access it through the travel, the Travify app, or I can um, download it as a PDF and send it to them electronically. So yay for not, you know, not uh, killing trees. Uh, it's, it's very green. Um, and I like that it's in a part of cutting down time is that I'm able to save certain activities that I use the most. So like every, I always include round trip uh, airport uh, transfers. So I actually have a, uh, a part of my Travify system is that I have the uh, departure transfers and arrival transfers, and I can move it right in. I don't have to type anything in. It is an activity that I have saved. I can also integrate with um, certain CRMs, including mine, which is Vacation CRM. So I can move itineraries from Travify right into C uh, Vacation CRM saves typing, yay. I'm all about saving time, saving typing, uh, so that I can use my time more efficiently. Uh, Travify also has a consumer facing travel app. So if my clients are, for example, and I had a client in Bali and they texted me via the Travify app, so I was able to resolve their issues without them having to make an expensive international call. And for me not to have to make an expensive international call. And one of the new things that they, that Travify has now is proposals and approvals. So if you submit a proposal to a client, you now can, they can automatically approve the, uh, the proposal so that you don't have to, you now have um, a record that they have approved the proposal that you have made to them, which you can use towards if there's an issue later on. 
speaking of CRMs, I use my vacation CRM. I know that there's, you know, it seems like a, there's a lot of camps, different camps in terms of different CRMs. Everybody has something a little different. I encourage you, regardless of, you know, where you fall, just have one, have a CRM. Um, it's a great way to keep track of your clients, keep track of upcoming trips, manage ICE, um, commissions, manage your ICs if you have any, do auto emails uh, for birthdays, anniversaries. It's a way to keep top of mind for the clients that you already have. Um, I use it also to track my revenue. By I track it by myself, my agents, suppliers. So if I, it's a, this is a great way if you're looking to do a co-op with a supplier because you know a part of that application is that you want to show the supplier that you are actually booking uh you're booking their product and it's very easy to just pull up hey you know i did x amount for this year uh you know i think that you know i, I have a great idea for a co-op and specifically to vacation crm um, it allows me to track leads so if I don't have the, a booking yet, but I do have someone who contacted me, I can include that in my vacation, my CRM system and it will give me updates. It will send auto updates to the client to give, you know, give them kind of keep them top of mind and keep me top of mind so that we can continue having conversations about the trip that I have sent to them. And Again, there are a lot of uh, there are a lot of CRM systems. I know the most popular ones are Travel Bo Travel Fi, I'm sorry, Travel Joy, uh, Tess, and Vacation CRM. I have used all three of them. Um, so I, am, as I said, I try to be, I try to experiment and find the best one for me. Um, and you should do the same. Most of them have some kind of free trial. So even if you're not sure about which one to use, try one. Um, and if you're, you're, you're like, I don't know how to do a CRM, try it and then learn. You gotta start somewhere. And I use Vacation CRM because I love their group um, and custom travel management. Again, I do a lot of custom trips. So um, I tend to um, put together a package and present one price to the client. And I love that Vacation CRM it, it enables me to present it as one price instead of broken down into different pieces. So it prevents you know, price shopping and things like that. So that's why I, I eventually went to Vacation CRM but I used test for a few years and I used travel five, uh, travel joy for a couple of months. So I'm able to kind of give, you know, kind of see which one works best for me. Now I, I spoke earlier about whatever email newsletters and email marketing systems that you use. Um, I use MailChimp, um, but I've used ConvertKit in the past. Again, part of my experimentation. I'm always experimenting um, because one of the things about becoming independent um, and being able to do your own thing is that you're able to kind of break free from whatever it is that you 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 might be used to. So if you're with a host agency, you might be kind of stuck with whatever CRM system that they use and that you that they require you to uh, record your your trips your the trips in. The great thing about being independent is that you can use one, you can try them all, or you can kind of do a mixture if you know I, you like a little bit more about using. A lot of people use Excel, and then they kind of supplement it with other things. You can do whatever it is that you want. I use MailChimp because uh, you know, marketing is a part of your job um, and it continues to be. I use MailChimp for my lead magnet campaigns. It's a, like a part of my sales process is you know, how people come into my sales funnel. I manage group emails through MailChimp uh, with auto emailing 
and my newsletter management. I actually use MailChimp not only for my uh, client newsletter, um, but also my newsletter to my ICs. Each of them go out every week. Um, my ICs get their emails on Monday and then I send out my emails to my clients on Wednesdays. So it, it's the great thing about having an email marketing system um, is that you can make a template and then just go in and drag, drop, change, you know, edit a little bit. And it doesn't take a lot of time. So you're not reinventing the wheel every single time that you have to do it, which I understand that a lot of people, the reason why you kind of fall off the bandwagon of newsletters is that it's tough. It's hard. Uh, so, and then it, you get frustrated because it's taking a lot of time. But when you have a system, any kind of email marketing system, and you have templates, it makes it so much easier. It makes the time go by easier. So instead of you know taking a couple hours, it might take a half hour. Uh, I'm that type of person that will be writing my my client email, um, my client newsletter at you know on Wednesday morning at 6 a.m. I wake up early. If I don't do it on Tuesday night, I do it 6 a.m. in the morning before I start working. And it takes me a few, it takes me about a half hour to do it because I've gotten it down where I have a template. I know where I need to put in each section and I move on from there and it's done very quickly. It actually now has made me be more consistent with my emailing. All right, later. <laughs> so later, if you do any kind of social media posting, later is amazing um they have a free version and they have a paid version so you know if you're like i don't have money but you still want to use it there is a free version that you can use which is just as great as the paid version i started out with the free version and then i moved into the paid version because i wanted a little bit more you know i wanted to a little bit more sparkles to my social media scheduling so um, the basic free version schedules Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and Pinterest pages, and you get, I believe, one of each uh, for your basic free plan, and you get 30 posts per month, so enough for one per month, one post per month for each, uh, each uh, platform. I wanted to do video, um, and I also wanted to do Instagram stories. So I upgraded to the paid version so I'm able to schedule videos and Instagram stories. So the great thing about any of any social media scheduler, and there are there are a lot of them out there. There's uh, Later, there's Buffer, there's a ton of them. It allows you to sit down on a quiet day and you are able to schedule all of your posts for a month and it will take you a couple hours to do. So instead of every morning waking up and struggling and like, what am I gonna post about today? You sit down one day per month, you plan out your social media strategy for that month, you post it all and you set it and you forget it. It's amazing. And once you start doing it and you, it, it you wouldn't believe how much time you save. Additionally, it makes you more intentional about your social media. Because if you're sitting down once a month and you're scheduling your Instagram, you're scheduling your Facebook and your Twitter and your Pinterest, it makes you intentional about what it is that you're scheduling, how does it fit in your overall marketing and sales, and it, you you see how everything starts to kind of go together. So if you are focused on romance travel, you might focus one month on honeymoons. So you can you can plan all of your honeymoon posts for Instagram, Facebook, and it makes everything very cohesive. This year I've done, I, I did future destinations. Uh, so I know each month when I plan with my virtual assistant, I tell her, this is my my uh, future destination for this month. And then we plan the videos, 
we plan these the posts that I want, the type of graphics, the type of language I want used in the posts, the hashtags, so that you're able and I'm able to know that regardless of anything that happens in my life, you know, if I am away on a fam or if I have a personal issue that, you know, leads me to take a, I take away a little bit from my work, I know that those posts will always go out unless there's a, you know, an outage. If, if Facebook and Instagram has an outage, we can't do anything about that. But beyond that, if, if things that I can control, I can tr control those and it, it causes less stress for you. And also it allows you to track your analytics for your page. You can save hashtags. I have on my uh, later account, I have hashtags that I use, you know, depending on if I'm doing group travel, I have hashtags for those. If it's a destination wedding hashtags, uh, I have honeymoon hashtags. And all I have to do is just copy and paste it into the post. You, I'm telling you, I'm all about using, finding the easy way to do things. Later is it. All right, your virtual assistant. I have one um, and I'm not rich. So let's, I'm just gonna put that right out there. I'm not rich um, and you know, I make, you know, I, pretty, I feel like I'm pretty successful as a travel agent, but I feel that a part of that success is the fact that I have a virtual assistant. I'm able to, and you have to use a great virtual assistant. You can't just use, you know, just a random person. Why hire one? First, it's to work on those time consuming projects that you keep putting off. I'm sure that each one of you have a list, probably a long list of things that you want to do, but you can never find the time to do. Mine was lead magnets. I had all of these great ideas about the lead magnets that I wanted to put together, which was basically little booklets that were maybe three, three to seven pages long and highlighting different destinations from New, the New York City area. I had great ideas. When I was able to do them, it was I had them in my head for about a year and a half before they were realized on paper because I did not have the time to do it. I, there was always something else for me to do. When I got a virtual assistant, I basically emailed her and I told her, hey, you know, I'm looking to do a, you know, a booklet for LGBT friendly destination, uh, Caribbean island destinations from New York City. And you have to be, you know, you know I, my lead magnets are very specific. Um, and I told her, these are the, the islands that I would like to feature. Can you please put together something for me? Um, and she put it together. It's amazing. Um, I loved it. She probably did a much better job than I would have done um, because she does have that experience. You can use a virtual assistant to source photos and schedule social media posts. Um, and it doesn't have to be expensive. Um, if anyone wants, you know, some ideas about how it is that you can you can set it up, you can contact me. Um, I'll I'll give my email address after the webinar. But you can there's a million ways that you can set it up. But I think the most important thing that you need to keep in mind when you're hiring an assistant is that you pick someone that has the experience for the task that you want. So if you're looking for someone to manage your social media, you want to have someone that has experience doing that. You can't just hire any old person. You have to have someone that knows how to schedule posts, that knows how to write hashtags and write, um, you know, write comments on Instagram and Facebook. You can't just have any old person. If you want someone who is more of a graphic artist, then and you want them to put together, you know, lead methods, or you want them to update your website, you want to make sure that they have that experience because if they don't have that experience, that experience, then you're going to end up having to change a lot of things, which does not help you. And a part of picking someone that has the experience for the task that you want, 
you have to make before you even think about hiring an assistant you have to decide what it is that you want them to how you want to use them so because learn knowing what it is that you want knowing how it is that you want to use them will guide who it is that you choose so it doesn't help if you want someone to you know do data processing for you but you pick someone who's a graphic artist because it's gonna be a wrong fit all the way around. All right, these are free. So this is a great, if you have Google, you know, a, a Google um, email, the, the Google Suite business emails. Um, first off, if you are using a Gmail, so if you're, you know, Tammy's travel at gmail.com, my first suggestion to you is please go out and get a professional B business email. Um, you know, get Tammy at Tammy's travel.com. It just makes, it just gives an outwardly more professional appearance um, to your business. The second thing I want to talk about is Google Suite tools. I am a huge fan of Google Suite tools. Uh, I use them every single day because I work Although my, uh, my hours are usually about 12 to eight every day, I'm working basically from 12 to 11 every day. So for me, those, these tools really help me make sure that I am still working, you know, still utilizing my time as much as I can. First thing, Google Tasks on, on my desktop, I have a, on the right-hand side of my screen, I have a long running, list of tasks, which could include, you know, put together proposals for different clients and when it's due, when do I want to have it done? The second thing, schedule emails. A lot of people have talked about, you know, how do I manage my clients that, you know, contact me at three o'clock in the morning? Um, I might be still up, but I don't want to respond at three o'clock in the morning because then that will just encourage them to keep emailing you at three o'clock in the morning. It's a very, it's a vicious cycle. You don't want to do it. I schedule my emails. If a, I, my, I have a very firm um, office hour. So after eight o'clock, if you contact me by email, I will respond because I'm, I'm still doing work, but I will schedule that email to go out the, at 12 PM, which is when my office opens. So unless I read it and it's an emergency and my clients who are in and traveling and having an emergency, they have a separate line that they call, but for every other person, they get their emails are scheduled. It will go out at 12 PM. I'll, so that means that I respond. I don't forget that they emailed me and it goes out when I want it to go out. Another thing that I don't know if everyone's aware of is canned responses. Basically, if you re write the same email a million times um, in a day, you can save that email and just kind of click it when you are you want to use that email again. I have different ones, so I have a canned response for when someone gets their travel documents, send it out to them. I have a canned response when someone approves their Travify itinerary. So I send them an email like, hey, thank you for approving your itinerary. I'm so glad to work with you. Um, and here are the next steps. It's very simple. And it saves me from having to type that a million times. And Google Voice. So I use Google Voice as my emergency contact line. It's primarily only for clients that are traveling. Everyone else is routed to my office line. And I use it also to contact or keep in contact with suppliers, international suppliers, because, you know, Google Voice, they, you can actually, you know, call overseas for a, a couple cents per minute. And so $10 will last you a long time. It's my $10 is still lasting me over. It's almost a year now. And I still have used, I still have the same $10 that I put on the Google Voice account last year. So it's great. All right, so my final thoughts, and I, I think that I've kind of stressed this over again, is just do what works for you. 
this is my this is what's my journey and i hope that maybe i have uh given you some tips on things that you can use or you you know if you don't want to copy me but you can use a you know oh i like this idea let me use that or you know i really like this later thing i'm going to do more research into that do what works for you because everyone's sales process is different everyone's you know tolerance for emailing client clients emailing at midnight is different you have to work with your strengths and you know if you love love you know the excitement of putting together your social media every single day a schedule is not great for you you want to be spontaneous however if you want to plan things out in advance you want to have those things put in place so that you can enjoy not only your business, but you also enjoy your life. You don't want to be chained to your desk. My thought is you can make back money, but not time. So my philosophy is that I will always find a product that I can use that can give me back my time. And I'm going to shout out my boyfriend because uh, I always end up quoting him on this which I hate, but I always end up quoting him on this is work smarter, not harder. As a part of, you know, you make back your money, but you don't make back your time. Because the less time that I use, that I waste basically doing all of these random office type things, the more time I have to go out there and find new clients, take care of the clients I now have, and make more money for myself and for my agency. I'm going to turn it back over to Stephanie and also to uh, the others in the listening in this webinar. So if they have any questions for me. Yeah, thank you so much. That was uh, that was really, really awesome. I think everybody learned something. Even I learned something. I'm going to go check out later after this for sure, because um, that was really cool. Lots of really great tips. Um, yeah, we had a lot of uh, just questions sporadically throughout. So I'll just start here. Um, one, and a lot of people are saying right now, thank you. Um, that was really great. So many people saying great webinar. Um, Richard also said, no question here. Just want to say that Tammy rocks. She is an amazing business owner. So Tammy, you have a lot of praises going on right now. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, but for the first question here, so the first question is, uh, Margarita asked, how do you find most of your clients? Do you feel like a strong social media presence is important? So um, right now, I have made an effort to be more local. So for me, um, I now go out into the community which for me is as a it's crazy that i'm a lawyer because i'm so introverted at times but i really have made an effort to go out into the community and really talk to people so i've been getting a lot of my business now um if it's not referrals from my old clients i'm now getting a lot of business for from people that I have spoken to in the community, business owners, I've joined um, my the Brooklyn Chamber of Commerce. And I have, you know, reached out to former coworkers. And I, I've stumbled upon different things because I am now going out. Um, so it, it depends on how you want to work your business, I want to be more local. So in order to be more local, you have to be more local, you have to be out there. Um, so and I also made the efforts in the time. So I want to shout out um, Emily from Bon, um, bon Viant, uh, Copy because she helped me put together my website, the copy for my website, so that it will resonate with the, the clients that I want. So um, I use that a lot. Um, I, my website attracts people, the type of clients that I want for them. Um, in uh into me um into my website into my sales funnel i would say i wouldn't say that my social media is the hugest thing because i don't have like millions of followers or even thousands of followers but i am consistent with it so and it's more about if you're consistent eventually people will start coming to you 
because you're not doing kind of a fly by night, you're showing them that, you know, you are a legitimate business owner and you are consistently doing this. Awesome. That's great. And um, one quick question here too. And um, we can also, if anybody does miss this later, feel free to reach out to us at Travify, um, just at professional at Travify.com and we can get you Tammy's information. But um, Tammy, a lot of people are asking, what is your contact? If you mind sharing that really quick. Well, my email address is my first name, Tammy, T-A-M-M-Y at millionmilestravel.com. <laughs> Perfect. Thanks. And, um, and again, to anyone, if you have any questions for Tammy after this, or, you know, we don't get to your question, feel free to reach out to us and I can um, work on getting that answered for you and uh, getting you connected with Tammy. Um, so another question. So we had a lot of questions kind of coming in about the virtual assistant. And I'm really curious as well, too. So I'm excited people ask this. So um, I kind of have two questions from you from two different people, but I'll just say them together. Is, is there a source to find a virtual assistant? And then also, what is the price range for a virtual assistant? So, so this is going to be sound weird, but I actually found my virtual assistant on Facebook. Um, I did a, I um, posted a jobs posting on Facebook for a virtual assistant. I put down exactly what it is that I wanted. Um, and I got a million, I, I feel that I had, I got so many um, responses, but per, for me, I was particularly looking for someone who was local. So I wanted someone that was in the New York City area. I wanted someone that had previous experience being a virtual assistant so that they were able to kind of work with me and my quirks sometimes. And um, I ended up choosing someone who lived in Bronx, in the Bronx, so not local to me per se, but local enough. Um, and she had experience with um, being a personal assistant. She she's actually still a virtual assistant to um, I believe three other people and she somehow manages to work with us all. It's completely insane. But she is my lifesaver most days. Um, and, you know, I, I don't know what I would do without her. Um, in terms of how you pay. Um, so I use, um, I, my agreement with her is um, I have set a set block of time. So I have, I get, is it 10 hours every two weeks? Um, and I pay her a flat fee, regardless of if I use those 10 hours, um, I, I pay her a flat fee. Some people pay hourly, but because of my, it was kind of spotty. So because sometimes I would use her like more one week and then I might not use her at all for a second week. Or if I do all of my, we do all of the social media postings in the, at the beginning of the month, and then I might not use her again for the rest of the month. I thought that it would be more simpler if I do a block set of time. So I get 10 hours every two weeks for her and back and forth, we went back and forth a little bit in terms of how much time it would be, but I felt that that was enough time where it would be worth her while and also worth mine because I use her a lot, primarily, as I said before, for my lead magnet creation. That's excellent. And that sounds like also kind of a secret to success for having a virtual assistant. So that's really cool. Um, so kind of going on how to build your business. Uh, this is a really good question in there. Linda asked, uh, she said, I'm already an independent and already have been booking. I originally had been mentored by a mid-sized host agency and they allowed me to have an IATA card. I'm growing away from them. Do I need to have any certifications to continue as an independent travel agency? I am an LL. See. Sorry, I need to unmute you here really quick, Tammy. I'm unmuting you right now. Here we go. All right. <laughs> Sorry about okay. that. <laughs> All right. Um, in I just want to make sure I understand in terms of looking for additional certifications like destination certifications or in like industry certifications. Uh, if, if I could, That'll or maybe she should. Uh, I think she should contact me because I want to get some more clarification on that question. Perfect. And yeah. I, yeah. So um, I forgot her name, but 
just uh, tell her to contact me directly and we can probably talk about it um, offline a little bit longer so that I can get, I want to make sure that I answer it correctly because um, I'm not quite sure what it is the, the question. Yeah, definitely. I will. Um, yeah, and it was Linda. So uh, there was a couple other people who asked kind of questions around that too. And I think also it'll be really cool. You're such a wealth of knowledge on, you know, all this stuff, but you also have that lawyer side, which is really cool, um, which would be really helpful for a lot of people. And um, actually somebody asked about that. Um, it's Jen Early. Um, and she asked, do you review IC contracts? Just curious since you practice law. <laughs> So I um, I put together my own contracts with help um, because I, I do administrative law, so I don't have a particular, I don't do contracts regularly, um, but I do review them just, I will review if somebody is looking for just a review, I, you know, I don't write them, so, but if you're looking for reviews um, and if you have, and for suggestions about what to include um, in your contracts, definitely contact me, um, but that is the limitation that I have. I don't write them because I'm not a contracts lawyer, um, but you know, lawyers, we have our own special little thing. Contracts is not mine, <laughs> so, um, but yeah, if anyone has, you know, I see contracts that they, you know, that they just need an extra eye on, you know, definitely feel free to reach out to me. Perfect. Um, and then uh, Suzanne just asked now, and I think this is a really good question is, can you tell us more about lead magnets? Do you put sample itineraries together and how do you market them? Or it basically is that what you do as a lead magnet? Or can you share a little bit more about what your lead magnets look like? Um, uh, my lead magnets currently look like booklets. Um, and you've probably seen them pretty much all over um, where you know, somewhat, um, I usually use them if I'm doing Instagram or Facebook ads where I would say, you know, find the top five destinations, you know, from J from New York City for LGBT couples. Um, and then they would click on it um, and it would send them, they would have to include their email address and then it will send them the lead magnet, which is a booklet. I can tell you that my L my LGBT one is basically five destinations um, around the Caribbean that are LGBT friendly. Um, and then I give them information about, hey, it's, um, you know, it's Aruba. And this is information about Aruba. And, um, you know, these are the flights that fly from the New York City area into Aruba. And here is a very popular, you know, LGBT friendly um, area in Aruba. And here is, you know, a IGTLA, uh, you know, um, approved hotel. So it's, you have, when you're doing your lead magnet, you have to be focused on who it is that you're trying to market to. So my LGBT um, lead magnet is looking for LGBT couples in New York City who want to travel to the Caribbean and they are curious about which or you know which islands would be most friendly for them and those and those are the ones that, that i am trying to target and they're the ones that will be interested in picking up or will be signing up for that booklet so um you can your lead magnet magnet could be anything i know that a lot of times when people first start out it's you know a packing list or it's a you know a timeline calendar if you're doing destination weddings. So it could be anything, but you want to make it something that will be worth the while of the person that you're targeting, and you want it to be targeted because the you you don't want to just make a random you know lead magnet because it's not really going to target anyone. You want it to be extra targeted, especially if you're using it for you know in in conjunction with Facebook ads because you know that can get really crazy and expensive really quickly so you want to be super targeted about who it is that you know is clicking on that that ad and getting those that uh getting that lead um and yeah i have a few of them uh since i do a lot of romance travel um and a lot of travel in general in the caribbean central and south america most of my lead magnets are targeted towards that I've been starting to helping my IC put together their lead magnets um, and 
you know, I have one that does family travel in Europe. So we're going to be starting to design a lead magnet, you know, a success, how to, you know, have a successful European vacation with, you know, a large family because she does a lot of large, especially very large families. So, you know, as I said, I think the, the takeaways from lead magnets is that you want them to be targeted. Um, and you targeted to, you, you need to have a client in mind when you're writing your lead magnet. That's really great I, ideas in there and how, oh, sorry, I'm gonna, gonna mute you there really quick. Um, that's really cool though to, you know, focus in. I think everything that you've been saying from the beginning is finding your, your niche and your expertise and then um, putting that into, uh, you know, into your marketing efforts and really hollowing into what, who you're trying to go for. That's so cool and such great stuff. And I wish we could keep talking here. I know everyone, there's still questions just kind of pouring in here. So I'm um, so sorry, everyone, that we're not able to get to all of your questions during this time. Um, but I do just want to say once again, you know, thank you so much, Tammy, for uh, joining us here today. This has been really fun. And I know that everyone else has learned a ton on here as well and um and sorry I, I unmuted Tammy there's a little I I sound like an alien on there when when we have we have some little back and forth so that's me unmuting and muting sorry everyone um but I just want to thank everybody again thanks for being here and uh I don't know Tim do you have any last words I guess for us to part with thank you so first off thank you to everyone that um has uh, come come on this webinar. Uh, if you have any additional questions, I'm sure that there's a ton of them. I know I had a ton when I when I you know made my transition. So feel free. I am I try to be as responsive to everyone as possible. And I know that I have spoken to a lot of people that have thought about making that transition, and they don't really know if it's the right step for them. So if you have any questions about that. Feel just I don't don't hesitate to reach out to me. I, I I'm really really serious about that. Do not hesitate to reach out to me. Um, I try to and if we need to have a longer conversation, I will get on the phone and I will talk to you. So you know I once you get me talking, I start talking. But you, <laughs> so I am I I am I'm excited for everyone who might might be thinking about doing the whole um, going independent. And if you have any questions, I am free to talk. Um, you know, I think I've already started getting some emails and I will respond to everyone. <laughs> and you might get a really late response from me, but I'm going to respond. Nice. Yeah, you'll get the 3 a.m. response. That's how yeah. special everybody here is. <laughs> Well, thank you so much again, and thanks, everyone. And enjoy the rest of your evening. Um, I'm sure many are on the evening, but any in the morning. Enjoy your Friday. Have a great long weekend as well. Thanks, Tammy. Thank you. Have a great day, everyone, or great night. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.